There have been a number of calls for both U.S. President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to step down with a couple of big elections coming up this year and next. They're just around the corner. Justin Trudeau has faced calls from with his own caucus to step down. Now, to chat about this in more detail is Sun political columnist Brian Lilly, who's out at the cottage. Uh, Brian, thanks again for joining us here. Will Trudeau get the message allowing his party time to rebuild and regain momentum heading into October 2025, or will he stay on and potentially go down with the ship? Well, I, I think he's going to stick around, and part of the reason why is where I am. You know, he loves coming to Georgian Bay, where I'm sitting, renting out a really expensive cottage on your dime and mine. He likes the flights. He likes the travel. He likes the trappings of this job. So, yeah, he's getting calls, like MP Wayne Long, who's bit of an old-fashioned liberal, you know, the centrist kind, the kind that doesn't hate business. It, Wayne Long came out of business. The reason he wrote that letter saying we need a, a change in leadership is that he's the guy, he, he's not running again. Uh, he started out well in the Liberal caucus in 2015 when he was first elected, but he was too friendly to business. Trudeau basically chunted him to the side. He's got nothing to lose. But you know, I can tell you how there are many more people like Wayne Long who are either going to be stepping away and think Trudeau should, or they're just nervous about their jobs. You know, it, do you think George Halal in uh, Calgary is feeling real confident he's going to win again? Randy Boisneau in Edmonton? I, I know in Alberta you joke about it being Redmonton, but it won't be liberal red very long with Boisneau and Trudeau running the show. So he's going to keep facing these calls. I'm still in the camp that says Trudeau won't step away, but time will tell. I mean, a summer full of pressure... He did say during an inter interview with CBC, the only media he apparently talks to these days, by the way, since the by-election is CBC, he said he wants to be prime minister for many more Canada days to come. Uh, the, the Canadian public doesn't share that sentiment. Now, recent polls show just how unpopular Trudeau and the Liberals are. You even have a poll showing the coalition deal with the NDP is very unpopular. It's even unpopular with NDP voters who don't think that it's doing a very good uh, job. It's not helping the party. It's not helping Jagmeet Singh. Uh, this is a poll done by Leger for Post Media at the end of June. Um, it showed a, a slight narrowing of the gap between the Liberals and the Conservatives federally, but it's still 41% say they would vote for Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives compared to 27% for Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. That's mostly based off of a bit of a bump in Atlantic Canada. And so, you know, these regional numbers can bounce it around. Doesn't matter. That's still a big majority for Polyev and the Conservatives if those numbers came in. The NDP is not doing well. They're down at about 17, 18 percent in most polls. They need to be polling higher. You know, after that by-election in Toronto St. Paul's last week, everyone was talking about all the liberal ridings that the, um, uh, the poly of conservatives could be stealing in Toronto. Well, there's a whole pile that the NDP could be stealing if they get the, their act together. There's going to be a by-election to replace former finance minister David Lametti in Montreal. And the NDP are feeling pretty confident that they can win the riding of La Salle Mard. Most of your viewers aren't going to know that riding, but they will know the guy who used to hold it, Paul Martin. This has been a liberal stronghold forever. And the NDP could be stealing a West Island, well, kind of West Island. It's a Western Montreal riding. That's liberal stronghold again. So the NDP... This deal is not helping them. They're too closely tied to the Liberals. And Jagmeet Singh saying it's the worst government ever and then voting for them isn't helping the party. Now, Brian, one of the names you and I tossed, tossed back and forth and we talked a bit about replacing Justin Trudeau was former Bank of Canada Governor uh, Mark Carney. But a new name has floated to the surface as a possible Trudeau replacement, and that's former B.C. Premier Christy Clark. Is that a serious option or maybe just speculation at this point in time? Oh, it's going to be tough to tell, but interesting. You know, on Carney, he was out posting on social media on Canada Day in both national languages as if he's already an elected leader. He's not. Uh, but he was talking about how beautiful the country is, how wonderful the country is. You know, so we all know Mark Carney's running. He's also telling everyone who will listen that he's running. Well, now starts the whisper campaign about Christy Clark. And Clark is one of the, you know, senior liberals throughout the country who have come forward to say, Justin Trudeau should step down. You've had Catherine McKenna, his former environment minister, um, definitely on the left wing of the Liberal Party, part of Trudeau's inner circle at one point. You've had John Manley, a former Cretchen area finance minister, uh, Percy Down, 
the former uh, chief of staff to Jean Chrétien. But Christy Clark is different. You know, the BC Liberals, not the same as the uh, as the federal Liberal Party. And so, uh, but Christy Clark, you know, it's a coalition of federal Liberals and Conservatives, but Clark was very much on the Liberal side. And, and so for her to come out and, and say that Trudeau should resign is very interesting. And then the Whisper campaign, ooh, does Christy want this? Speaking to some people out West, they're saying, yeah, I'm hearing she does want it. So she would be a formidable fo uh, force. And I interviewed one liberal strategist on um, the Full Comment podcast that just came out today. And he was saying what makes her interesting for him as a liberal is that she actually knows how politics operates. You know, some liberals think they've got to go outside the Trudeau cabinet. You can't have anybody too close. But Mark Carney doesn't know how politics works. Uh, Christy Clark, she does. And she knows how to do successful comebacks like she did in 2013 when the B.C. liberals were way behind and she turned it around and won a majority. So, Brian, what are your thoughts on our neighbors to the south? Will the Democrats replace Joe Biden in time for the U.S. federal election in November? I mean, following his recent presidential debate with Trump, many feel that he's no longer fit to lead. Hey, look, you know my view on, on American politics, Hal. I'm not a fan of Trump or Biden because they're both protectionists. They're both bad for our beef producers. They're bad for our forestry industry. They're bad for our auto industry. They're bad for Canadian industry. But Joe Biden's performance last Thursday was something else. I have thought for a while that, you know, there's something up, medical or mental health issues that weren't being addressed. But I think he has declined precipitously over the last several months, and we didn't see it. You know, you'd see bits of it, and then they'd explain it away. Oh, no, 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 that was just this, or that was just that. An hour and a half, two hours on stage, then he had to be helped down by his wife for three small steps. Uh, he couldn't complete sentences. The Democrats are in full panic mode. But the only way this uh, plays out where Biden isn't the nominee is if he steps down and allows them to pick a new nominee at the convention in August. If Joe Biden is on the ticket against Donald Trump come November, Donald Trump, Trump wins in a landslide. That's going to infuriate some Canadians. That's going to excite some Canadians. Your mileage may vary. Either way, not, neither one of them is good for Canadian industry. Neither one of them is good for Canadian trade. But what a spectacle to watch down there uh, as Biden became the story. You know, forget about Trump. Biden was the story. Trump won by being able to finish a sentence and a thought. Brian, there was a brief strike at Calgary-based WestJet Airlines this past week. It had a major impact on travel for a number of Canadians, including my sister-in-law, who's trying to make her way back from Thailand. The canceled flights are still rippling through the system. Now, while this dispute was between the union and the airline, you say part of the blame must go to the Trudeau government. Why is that? They've been trying to show that they are incredibly friendly with organized labor. All the parties have. They all recently voted to ban replacement workers in federally regulated industries, which would include airlines, would include across uh, uh, interprovincial trucking companies, bus lines, banking, broadcasting, etc. So they've all been trying to show how friendly they are to unions. They all want the union vote in the next election. But this was a strike that was supposed to be settled, or a labor dispute, it wasn't supposed to get to a strike. This was supposed to be settled through binding arbitration. And the union still went on strike. And Labor Minister Seamus Reagan sat on his hands for two days. This didn't have to go this way. Um, you know, WestJet was abiding by the uh, binding arbitration, which, by the way, normally favors the unions rather than the companies. WestJet was abiding by that. There was no reason that the union shouldn't have. And when they didn't, Seamus O'Regan, Trudeau's labor minister, should have jumped in and told them in no uncertain terms, you can't be doing this and you can't be stranding, uh, you know, how many thousands of Canadian travelers with a, what's essentially a wildcat strike. He didn't do that. Brian, the city of Calgary is hoping to have the water main issues completely cleared up by the beginning of Stampede, which starts on Friday. Now, the water main break has been repaired, and the city is doing its water testing right now. While this may look like a Calgary problem, you say that governments all across the country need to really address looking at their pipes and aging infrastructure. Uh, all across North America, uh, this is a type of pipe that uh, blew because of its composition. Um, I was speaking with my, my colleague at the Calgary Herald, Don Braid, who's done some great work on this, and Don was explaining how this was a type of pipe that was used across the continent 
between uh, 1955, uh, roughly, and the early to mid 90s. So by, by I think by 95, this type of pipe was no longer being used. Now, so this is Calgary's second main water main. The original one is still going with material from 92 years ago. Uh, that one has not broken. That one has not had uh, stress tests showing uh, problems with it. This is one Calgary should have known about 20 years ago, but that's another story. If you're in Lethbridge or Red Deer or Hamilton or Nova, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, you need to be asking your city council, hey, do we have this type of pipe? And if so, have we tested it? One of the problems with this type of pipe is if it comes in contact with things like clay, it can deteriorate and weaken. And that's what happened here. Uh, if it is surrounded by sand and gravel, it can last 100 years, 200 years. That's what the promise was when it was put in. But this pipe built in St. Eustache, Quebec, used across the continent, made in other places as well, used across the country, across the United States, we could all be having these problems. You know, it, when they built it, they said, you know, it needs to go in this type of situation, but they didn't say, and if it touches clay, it'll pop in 50 years and cause you all kinds of problems. So, you know, a, a lot of things that we thought were going to be indestructible back in the 50s and 60s when we upgraded our construction systems haven't worked out. We've got a big issue here in Ontario with the Ontario Science Centre being closed because th this roof that was supposed to last 100 and 150 years is falling apart <laughs> and in danger of imminent collapse after 50 Lots of problems like this going on, and these are the infrastructure issues that municipal politicians have to look at, but they rarely want to do that, Hal. They want to ask the province or the federal government for more money so they can build something shiny and new right in your neighborhood, get a photo in the local paper, get on uh, Bridge City News, and get reelected. They don't want to deal with fixing things that are going to be breaking. Now, Brian, here's a bit of a surprise. You recently offered some praise for an NDP politician, and that politician is Wab Kanu, the Premier of Manitoba. You said a big amen to something that Kanu said. What was it? He posted a Canada Day message that I thought was spot on. He didn't just say, oh, I love Canada, and then apologize for Canada. He did a quick video message, posted it on social media, holding the Canadian flag, talking about how great this country is, talking about how great our history is. And then he says, and if you're Indigenous, you're part of this history too. You are part of this story. There was no apology. There was no... Uh, you know, we're a great country, but, and I just love that. We need to see more of that. You know, Wab Canoe did something else that uh, uh, surprised me recently. You, you know that uh, Rachel Thomas asked a little while ago for the uh, Trudeau Liberals to suspend the gas tax over the summer so that people could afford a road trip. And Mark Holland said, well, you, you know, you're going to burn the planet down and lock the kids up. Wab Canoe just recently cut the gas tax for the summer as well so that people can afford a road trip. I'm going... This is a progressive that's actually listening to people. Good for him. Yeah, it's funny. We chatted with our affordability minister, Nathan Newdorf, about that here in Alberta. And he says as long as oil is above $90 U.S. per barrel, we'll consider it again. But it's not at that point right now. So looks like we'll be paying the full 13 cent provincial fuel tax as we hit the highways for our summer holidays. Brian, now speaking of Mark Holland, let's circle back to Mark and that outburst. And we all saw what happened at Centre Block on Parliament Hill there. Uh, when he snapped at Lethbridge MP Rachel Thomas, you know, Canadians driving their cars for 10 days straight, watch the planet burn. Now, you're actually questioning whether or not the minister is okay. Can you explain? He's had a lot of bizarre outbursts beyond that. He has, um, you know, said that, you know, as Canadians and as adults, we need to start talking about sex more. And he's going to talk all about it. What? No, we don't. And I don't need a minister from the government talking about this for me. Uh, he has had outbursts on how nicotine pouches are deadly. His department is uh, funding heroin pills being handed out. That's absolutely bizarre. Uh, and, and now he's saying that, uh, you know, before the federal dental plan came along, the one with no dentists, what is it, only 30% of the dentists in Alberta have signed up? Uh, and the premier wants out. He was talking about Premier Smith wanting out of the federal dental program. And he said, well, yeah, I was talking to this person who said before this came along, they had a patient gargling with gasoline. I don't believe it for a second, Hal. But he went on CBC. He made that claim. It wasn't challenged, of course, because it was Trudeau minister on the state broadcaster. But he made that claim. Is Mark Holland well, or is he suffering some kind of mental break? Does he need a break from politics? Uh, the voters want to give it to him, by the way. We just don't have an election at this point. 
political reporter and Sun columnist Brian Lilly, thanks so much for joining us today from Cottage Country in Georgian Bay. Thank you, Hal.